Well, that's govern over there. We've just got to figure out how to get there. I'm in party just now, and I'm on the Glen Lee beside the Riverside Museum. And at one time, Partick was part of Govan Parish, and both places were essentially joined at the hip, even though they were separated by the mighty River Clyde. And I dare say they were perhaps both part of the, the regal heart of the kingdom of Strathclyde. In the old days we would have got a ferry over to Govan, just like the one that's at the mouth of the River Kelvin. And as a wee boy who grew up in Partick, I remember that ferry. I think what I remember most of all is the plank of wood that you had to walk over in order to get on and off it. <laughs> I'm just not sure if such a thing would be allowed nowadays. Uh, you'd probably need safety harnesses and ropes and perhaps even your own personal crane. Today, in order to get over to Govan, I can either head east and cross over a bridge, but instead, I'm going to go into deepest Partick, because there's another way to Govan. Come with me. The pedestrian and cyclists part of the Clyde Tunnel, built between 1957 and 1964, has not always looked so white and pristine. Just a few years ago, it looked like this. And to my uncouth eyes, this colourful mass of graffiti was far more pleasing. Well, this is the lowest part of the Clyde Tunnel. And this will take us to Govan. Um, we're right underneath the River Clyde just now, and we're also underneath the roadway because that noise that you can hear is the sound of vehicles on the roadway above us. If ever this tunnel was to flood, we would get it first. And there have been times when I've been in here and you occasionally see tide marks on the side that indicates that perhaps now and then there is a wee bit of flooding goes on. So, let's not hang about. Up until 1968, this was the offices of Alexander Stephen and Sons, Lint House Shipbuilding and Engineering Works. One of a number of shipyards uh, along this section of the River Clyde between Partick and Govan. 
And it was here that Billy Connolly served his apprenticeship as a welder. And I, I'm not absolutely certain, but I, I don't think the Clyde Tunnel would have been complete when he worked here. So I would imagine he probably, like thousands of other men, had to get a ferry from Partick to govern in order to get to his work every day. There have been a number of shipyards in this small section of the River Clyde between Partick and, and Govan. Here yeah, you had uh, Middleton Shipbuilding Yard, Clydeholm Shipbuilding Yard, Govan Shipbuilding Yard, Linthouse Shipbuilding Yard, which is this one, and Fairfields. Um, there have been many more, and at low tide, the river reveals the slipways of many of those that have gone. The old offices of Fairfields, just along Govan Road, are far more opulent than those that remain at Lint House. They were built around 1890 and no expense was spared. Designed by John Honeyman and John Kepi, they include rather grand red sandstone statues of an engineer and shipwright by James Puttendrich McGillivray. The building is now a heritage centre and very much worth a visit. And at the old shipyard gate, the ghosts of the thousands of men who once worked here still spill out when their shift is over, after building not just ships, but the finest ships in the world. This is the waterfront path just behind Govan Old Church. And that's the Glen Lee where we started today's walk. In the summer there is a ferry that runs between the Riverside Museum and Govan. But I understand that at some point in, in the near future a bridge will be built. And it's always a sad occasion when a bridge is built because it invariably means the loss of a ferry. And no matter the size of the ferry, for it's a very wee ferry between Govan and the Riverside Museum, and no matter the size of the journey, because it's just a, almost a spit from one side of the river to the other, nevertheless that short voyage of discovery to, for some people, lands unseen will be no more. At one time Govan was not just part of the Kingdom of Strathclyde, it was at the very heart or centre, and many of the kings and members of royalty of the Strathclyde Britons are buried right here. Do not miss the Govan Stones exhibition in the old church. The people of Govan are a tough old bunch. They exhibit a no-nonsense approach to life, a stoic resolve and determination to tackle anything life throws at them, head on. And none more so than Mary Barber. During the First World War, with the men fighting in France, 
Many landlords thought to make a fast buck with the many men and women brought into places like Govan to work in the shipyards and munitions factories by putting up the rent. But Mary Barber and the people of Govan weren't having it, and she led a campaign of protest that included rent strikes and mass demonstrations. She later went on to become the first female Labour councillor in the city in 1920. There was quite a lot of children making what I can only describe as enthusiastic pirate noises on the Glen Lee a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> There's a lot of oon and arn going on. In quite a few places on the river, especially at low tide, you can often see the landing stages for the, the many ferries uh, on the river. And there were quite a few of them between the centre of Glasgow and towards uh, Yoker and Renfrew. At low tide, in, in the same way that you can see the various slipways of the, the shipyards that have gone, you can also see the steps that led down to where you would get on and off these ferries. And there was quite a few of them. You know, you had York Street Ferry, um, Clyde Street Ferry, I think, uh, Stop Cross Ferries, uh, Kelvin Hall Ferry, Govan Ferry, Govan Ferry West, Yoker, Renfrew, they were all, all along the river. And they were all operated by the Clyde Navigation Trust. My grandfather used to work for them in the 1930s and 40s, I believe. And I think he actually collected money from the ferries. And I remember my mother saying that he always carried uh, a police whistle. And also, I mean, in those days you had policemen in every corner. And if he thought somebody might be following him, because he was obviously carrying a bit of money, uh, he would just go up and have a bit of a chat to a policeman. But, um, I never knew the man. And I, I wish I had. So, you know, this is Govan Dry Dock, or, or Graving Dock. I had thought to uh, check my dictionary to find out what uh, graving meant, because I just thought they were called dry docks. I don't know what the graving dock is, but if you check your dictionary, I'm sure it'll be instantly um, obvious. Um, I mean, this graving dock was built in the, at various stages in the 19th century for the Clyde Navigation Trust. And big ships would come in here for a wee rest. Um, maybe a bit of spit and polish. And a stick and plaster or two. But the main thing is, uh, don't come in here. You know, it's not meant to be a place that's open to the public or anything like that, and it's, it's actually very dangerous, so just stay away from the place. The, 
the actual docks themselves are crumbling and uh, collapsing in places and there are certain holes in the ground where you could really come to uh, a serious bit of grief so stay away from the place it might be different in a, in a, a year or two's time because they keep talking about uh, doing some building and the, transforming the docks into something so I only come in here if you see a, a McDonald's or a, a burger joint or something like that <laughs> there's some wooden walkways at the head of the at the head of the docks here and there's something quite scary about the thought of walking over them because wood uh, they, they deteriorates <laughs> you look at it and you think oh oh The thing about coming in here, apart from just the joy of wandering around an old place where ships used to be, is I can see across the River Clyde. Uh, I mean, we're kind of opposite the clock tower of what is, uh, at the moment, the Clydeside Distillery. That's kind of where this part is. And it's a wee boy. That whole area on the other side of the River Clyde was essentially my playground. You know, it was full of uh, docks and warehouses and, well, you know, all the docks have gone, all the warehouses have gone. There is a small section of the warehouses still standing that they turned into luxury flats just further up the river there. Um, I never know whether to say up the river or down the river, um, but it's up that direction. And. You know, we used to get up to a whole load of stuff <laughs> that we probably, well, well, that we undoubtedly shouldn't have got up to. Uh, I mean, I was only about eight, you know, between maybe eight and ten year old, just a wee boy. And I remember one time <sighs> boarding a ship. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a huge ship, but it was a, a, quite a, a fair size. I'm going to change hands because my shoulder's getting sore. Yeah. And it was actually buried right, as I say, right beside that clock tower where the Clydeside Distillery is just now. And there was about two or three of us went on to this ship. And the police turned up and suggested that, you know, perhaps we shouldn't be on there because if the ship went away with us still on it, you know, we'd be taken away to some foreign land. For a fraction of a second, that sounded like quite an exciting prospect, but at the end of the day, it was a pretty good advice to just get the hell off there as quickly as possible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as we did. Um, on another occasion, I remember climbing the Finnison Crane, um, um, which is not to be recommended. It's It wasn't fenced off in those days, and... Yeah, there's just ladders, you could just climb ladders to the top. Not that everybody did it, you know, you just weren't meant to do that. <laughs> but uh, I, I climbed up to the very top and there's a kind of wooden hut up there. I opened the door and there was an old man inside, sitting at a desk with his back to me. And I don't think he noticed that I'd opened the door because he didn't turn round. And I got the fright of my life. And just quickly close the door and get back down at, at double quick time. <laughs> and I think sometimes when you sometimes when you look back at the things that you got up to as a child you do sort of wonder how on earth you managed to survive but um, I still seem to be here <laughs> in body if not in soul uh, I've got to remember not look at the camera just so much and look at where my feet are going. The place is full of uh, holes that you could just fall down and be kind of be killed, basically. Like that one there, look at that, look. I mean, if you didn't see that and you fell in it, you would be just... Uh, completely lost. 
and detail. But um, that's the, the sign centre and the, the tower over there. You've got the, the Waverley, which I, I think uh, may have been uh, built and launched at the Point House shipyard, which is at the mouth, or used to be rather, at the mouth of the River Kelvin. You're approximately where the Riverside Museum is and where we kind of started today's walk. Either there or, or the other side of the Kelvin, I'm not sure which. There's that many shipyards, it's very hard to kind of remember exactly where they were. And um, you've also got the Queen Mary over there, which is where we're going to end today's walk. Well, that's the Queen Mary just behind me. She was built in 1933 by William Derrien brothers in Dumbarton. And from then until 1977 she was a pleasure steamer that took folk from the centre of Glasgow, from Bridge Wharf beside the Jamaica Street Bridge, down the River Clyde towards Danoon and Rossi. She's undergoing restoration at the moment and it would be nice to think that she would someday be a pleasure steamer again and once again take folk on trips down the water. Whether that will happen or not I don't know but it's just nice to see her there and uh, the Waverley's just behind the camera as well so it's got a couple of boats here. And this is where we're ending today's walk. Just behind the uh, Queen Mary is the graving dock where we were and if I look along the river I can see the Riverside Museum and the Glen Lee, which is where we started. Um, so that was Govan, I'm Eddie Burns and I'll see you again.